What's up guys, this is Max here with Teenage Patriot, episode 2. So today we got my pastor, aka Grandpa, Pastor Tim. Uh, so we're just kind of be interviewing him and asking him questions and about his ministry and stuff. So where did it start? Like, all this, like, what's your life story here? My life story. Um, I started out 30 years of my life living in the world. Um not knowing Christ, uh, didn't get raised in a Christian home, although they took me to a Lutheran church to get uh, confirmed and got baptized there. Didn't know Christ. Uh, after the episode of confirmation, uh, I never went back to that church. And then uh, I grew up in a, in a very rough family, uh, they had nothing to do with church or God, and uh, because of that, uh, my entire life went in that direction, through school and into the military, uh, a very rough life there, got into a lot of different things that were very ungodly, and uh, I was still living that way when I got out. So in 1971, I got discharged, and, and then... Uh, it was in uh, 73 when I ended up getting married. And uh, then it went on for several years before I had an encounter with God. And through a consistent sharing with me about Christ, uh, my wife's father was in the pastorate and he uh, had a lot of patience and a lot of time on his hands to talk to me. So he kept infusing word into me, scripture after scripture, and finally they took root in my life and I ended up giving my life over to Christ. I was uh, baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of my sins and then got baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And it was uh, such a dramatic change that we started sharing Christ in people's homes and Bible studies and uh, inviting people to church and it very rapidly grew. It went from several people to up near 100 people coming into a house meeting. And uh, we've been working in the ministry ever since. So what would you say to someone starting off as a believer? Oh, starting off as a believer. Well, the first thing is you have to find someone or a church that is founded on the Word of God. You, uh, there's a lot of religion out there. There's a lot of, uh, lot of information out there that doesn't necessarily line up with the Bible. And you want to make sure that whatever you do, you stay close to the Word of God. That's the lifeline. And um, you, if anybody shares with you, you want to to double check and make sure that the Bible is there aligned with, align, aligning with the word that you're hearing. Um, you want to, you want to get be given truth. The apostle Paul said in the Bible that um, uh, a man is going to preach, he should preach the apostles doctrine. And if they're not doing that, um, you'd want to find somebody that is. Uh, you want to be, be sure that you have the evidence of salvation at your hands so that you can put an uh, application into your personal life. There's a, a lot of influence out there to just say a prayer and believe that you're saved. And I'm telling you right now, the Bible says there's a lot more to it. And it all comes through obedience to the exact word of God. Amen. So if someone were wanting to get or was called to like ministry, like street ministry, pastoral, what well, like what would you say a good like footing, like starting point for that? Well, a lot of people like to go to a, a college and get an education. Um, and I don't discourage that, but it's not readily, readily available for all people. Um, there's a term that's used in the world, on-the-job training. If you're under the influence of a good church, a good Bible-believing church, 
and you can work in that church and work through in the ministry, it's a good way to go. So you again, you want to make sure it's Bible-based and make sure that the influence is there that's going to bring you closer to Christ than anything else. As a pastor of today's society, like, like what's your view? Like, what do you see in this world as a pastor? I see a lot of trouble in the world uh, on every hand. Um, the uh, the uh, situation that you look at is uh, very uh, aligned with times of past when God had to bring judgment on the world. And when we look around and we see the things we see, uh, there's no reason why that couldn't happen very quickly. And nobody knows the day or the hour that that will take place. But when we see all of the, uh, the uprising that we see, the distancing that people are deciding to take from Christianity or God, they, you know, things are getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So I, I see a great need for this world to turn and turn back to God and the foundations of prayer and Bible reading. And they've taken that out of school and away from kids and, and uh, we've seen chaos ever since. So a lot of things are allowed to be taught in the schools, everything except for God. And we need that turned around. We need people to come back to him. We are gonna be talking about building your faith on a strong rock. So let's get into it. Today we're going to be reading Matthew 7, verses 24 to 27. So here we go. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So what these verses are trying to tell us is do not build your faith on a, uh, a bad foundation, sand. So build your faith on a strong rock and build it tall and strong so it doesn't fall rather than you build it on sand and fall. So we want to always stay in the word, fast, uh, worship, pray all the time. Can't be living like uh, hell in the privates, then be all fancy with God in the public. So you always got to be even public and private, always sticking to his word and always being the resemblance of Jesus. So Pastor Tim, do you have anything to uh, add in about the this verse these verses here well i uh, will say this that i was around construction many years of my life and working on buildings um when it comes to the structure of any building the foundation is the main thing you start out with it's got to be solid it's got to be able to hold whatever's going to be on top of it some buildings are huge you know look at some of the skyscrapers that you see those foundations had to be really prepared well you can't get a better foundation for somebody who wants to name Christianity as their faith uh, than Christ himself. Right. He is the solid rock. If you're not standing on him in every aspect, you're going to have trouble. I've seen people put in foundations that, um, in, in a structure of a building. One time I watched them build a three-story complex of apartments, and the very foundation they put in wrong. In the center holding the center wall for the entire construction, they made it an inch and a half lower than all the outside walls. And the footings were off an inch and a half. So when they built the building, they got up third story, they hadn't put the rafters on yet, but they had three stories all set and the openings for the stairwells were all there. Well, it started raining for about 12 hours and all the rain come into that building, went down through the stairwells and just followed them all down till it got down the basement and washed out all the concrete. Because with the inch and a half lower in the center of the building, it made a big draw for all the water and it all went to one spot, washed out all the concrete in the floor in the basement 
and they had to start constructing it all over again. See, that, that wasn't a good foundation and catastrophe hit and it was evident to everything and they had to start all from scratch again. So the same way would happen with your faith in God. If you don't have it founded on Jesus himself, he is the rock of salvation, you're going to have failings that happen. Might as well stop all that right away and make sure you got the solid foundation of your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the rock of salvation and it build everything off of him and you'll you'll be all right. Yeah. So we always want to uh, build our faith strong and not let it fall. So don't write God in your God first in your profile, then live like Satan's child. You can't do that. So I always just stick that straight and narrow path. Just stick in that that path right there and go on. Don't fall off. Don't go left, right, straight. So yeah, God made it real, real uh, bold here, in Matthew that. You should, you should build your faith on a strong foundation. Amen. So one of the main things for faith and building your faith on a solid rock is reading the word of God. It says right in uh, Romans ten seventeen, it says that uh, so f so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're reading this every single day, and I mean every single day, no sleeping in no no too tired to do it because you just can't do that just look what jesus did for you on that cross and all the amazing things in your life then look at reading an hour half an hour of scripture so we want to always stay in the word and read the word and that that verse makes it real bold that so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So listening, and if you if you don't have time to read, throw on some AirPods and turn on a preacher that you like. So, yeah. So I've uh, been living for the Lord now for 42 years and um, a lot of history there to fall back on. When the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word, a lot of people, uh, you know they get excited and their emotions get involved in their walk with god and uh, they look for services that have miracles happening in them but at the same time when jesus was walking this earth there were times when people needed miracles from him healings and things like that and there's times when jesus told people after he healed them he said go and tell no man about this the reason he said that was because he wanted people to come to him for their salvation and they didn't that doesn't bring people to God, seeing miracles happen. Right. They still go about living the way they want to live and out in the world. But it takes the faith only comes by that word, the reading the word of God. The more of that you have on the inside of you, the more faith you have in him, in Christ. So the faith doesn't come from somebody laying hands on somebody and seeing a miracle happen. It comes from that word, that seed of that word getting into your spirit and being allowed to grow there. So you need that. And when, um, you know, I, I've witnessed to a lot of people in my life and, you know, got them excited about coming to church and get them in there. And then you, you make sure they get into Bible studies because sitting down and actually studying the word gets into people. But that's what the Bible tells you right there so clearly that faith cometh by hearing. You got to hear it. And it's got to be the word, the word of Christ, his word, the Bible. That's the one that causes faith to grow in a person. So without that, you're going to be lacking when you need it the most. Right. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Teenage Patriot. Please like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. God bless.